So hello, uh, I'm Hiko Simon. This is the joy of Japanese uh, business, uh, Japanese business time with Rochelle Kopp. And today we have a great topic from S. Ken, who uh, is asking about Japanese meetings and specifically when you have a Japanese meeting, who are all of these people who show up and what are they doing? Uh, Japanese meetings are a bit of a mystery, so we are going to talk it. I'm thinking in Japanese. We're going to melt all of these mysteries. Okay. Decode them. We're gonna, we're gonna, yeah, all the Decide answers revealed. Them. It's like Discovery Channel. Look up. Okay, so, so Japanese meetings. Who can figure them out? Uh, they, I mean, Japanese meetings are a thing. Right, they are a thing, they are a ritual, and I think that's yeah, the key thing to know good, about them. Yes. And so you have to have lots of people uh, attend the ritual to make it a ritual, right? And I love to I love to call these things dances, and this is like a line dance. I mean, there's just a lot of people. <laughs> and it's like a line on each side of the table, right? <laughs> there are, and, and the thing is, that's the first thing. The numbers have to match up. You know, uh, uh, generally speaking, sometimes if you've only got three people and you and you get the, the, inv the information from them that there's going to be eight people attending, mm -hmm. Sometimes people don't, I just need five more people, just come and sit down, please. Uh, you get that, Dep depending on the type of meeting. Um, but certainly, yeah, I mean, for a lot of these meetings, you're only going to have one, maybe two people talking. It, they'll sit in the middle right. of the table, and you'll have all of these sort of more junior, progressively more junior looking people right. out to the edges. And there's a good question from S. Kim. Who, why, why, what are these people okay. there for? Well, some of them are there to be learning mm. and observing. Yep. Some of them are there to be filled in on what's going on. Yeah. Some of them are there in case they're needed yeah. to provide extra information. Yeah. And some of them are there because having more people at the meeting shows that you think it's important. Yeah. Yeah. I'd add a couple of things to that as well. A typical role for some of the observers is that they are the scribes. In Japanese, yeah, that's true. Japanese are really, really are big on written you know you want to exchange the notes and confirm the notes mutually on email afterwards this is a good practice actually even in english but japanese are very big on the written word mm -hmm. yes um, the other thing is, which is really interesting as well is is that usually in my experience when you're dealing with big company to company meetings unless you have a crisis um, the most senior person isn't the guy who talks right the the, the most senior person on each side will be sitting there Sometimes asleep. Sometimes asleep, but certainly looking very concerned and looking right. down. And it's kind of the number two guy on each side who's, who's doing really the doing talking. the talking, right? And the more senior person is there to show their support, right? And if needs be, you know, to, to intervene. To if intervene something if said, something is necessary. Well, a lot of times what I'll see is the more junior people are talking, hmm. and then the senior person will add just one sentence. Oh, yeah. But then that one sentence was really, really good stuff, right? Coming back to from the previous episode, preparation. This is right. what prep. You'll have a pre-meeting for a meeting like that, and there will be a point that, okay, when we get to this really important point, Shacho, uh, you're going to ram it home by being the guy who says it. Yeah. You know, we are not going to accept less than this. Right. Or... This is just something we can't go any higher. We, right. you know, we have to escalate. Whatever it is, yeah. They just the, they'll be there, and that'll just be the boom. You know, that's right. Yeah, it's coming from the top. And that'll be that'll be scripted, or or, or it'll be sometimes they'll be quiet the whole time, but it'll be uh, I, I do this all the time. If they say this, if they if they open up that can, um, this is and we have to say something strong back. Um, would be nice. But it'll be Shacho who's going to say it. Right. Uh, and again, it's, just, it's kind of like, it's like a, the Shacho is almost like a machine. I think of the Shacho as like a machine gun that you just keep on the CC beside you. And you hope you don't have to have shoot. Right, a, right. a good meeting, it's almost a definition of a good meeting. A good meeting is a meeting that the Shacho doesn't have to say anything. That's really true. Yes. Um, and I find, because you know, I am a Shacho, even of my very small <laughs> company. And what I find too is sometimes Japanese meetings are very relaxing because I don't have to be running the show oh, whereas yeah. in the US I'd be the one expecting the, to have to be running everything of course and I can it's yeah. very okay for me in a Japanese meeting yeah to sit there quiet and be very you know kind of stately yeah and let everyone else like do all the talking and and yeah. it's it's quite you know, you can maintain your image that way yeah <laughs> and it is another thing as well the with the shacho being there, it puts every it puts all the juniors who are doing the talking every just on a, on a, on an edge. It makes them prepare. 
and it makes them be very you know it actually it really does actually help the meeting that right way. it does yeah um it's kind of uh, uh, yeah there is one thing though about japanese meetings which i find still even fascinating and frustrating at the same time which is that um japanese are just and it is as part of the ritual it is the content of the meeting is almost it is as important as how you do it right and that means that if you book 60 minutes of time with that boss or that company um you don't go in and agree on something in five minutes and walk out right which you know it's like that co- would look that would look like um you hadn't planned yeah that's right yeah you've committed well you've committed to take 60 minutes of their time you're going to fill it out you're, you're going to make you it better worthwhile have something for them. to do with that yeah and you know coming in and say oh we agree okay go home oh, what was this give yeah. me my time they'll say give me my time back there's a there's a, there's a great japanese like intimidation phrase is give me my time back mm. you have to fill it up and it's kind of funny sometimes i've been in meetings where you kind of realize immediately that the point's there um, and people actually, they, uh, and, I, and I, I get frustrated by this because the, in the filling out of the rest of the hour, you actually find ways of derailing the agreement that you had if you just like nailed it in the beginning. Right. Um, but there again, a really well done meeting, even when they can see that the agreement's there, they'll still build it up. So it just everything like 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 the trains, it's like clockwork. How when you come in, you talk the structure right. and finish and go out perfectly on time and then walk exactly into the next meeting room at the same at the right time um it is this thing sometimes you do feel it though when you're in a room and you know okay this is just going to go the rest of the time no matter what yeah. never expect a meeting in japan to go early if, it, if it, the only times i've really seen really important meetings end early were complete disasters we're, we're <laughs> <laughs> everyone just wanted to get out of there <laughs> well literally i've literally been in two me- two meetings where Real high pressure meetings where the other side just stood up and we're walking out now and they walked out. Oh, that everyone... I don't get to go to meetings like that very often. Maybe I'm lucky. They're cool. Yeah. They're really cool. It's like I, I was I, the first time I saw that, ever saw that happen. I was kind of impressed. I mean, I was we're supposed to be horrified, but I was kind of like, wow, this is just like a movie. <laughs> but that's because in a ritual. I mean, this is like you know, in the middle of a dance, you know, with the leather glove across the face or something. It, it was like, whoa, people do that. Uh, but yeah, and so. It, it's another thing that's really cool and it's re- I appreciate how it's so hard to navigate if you're not a Japanese and you're seeing the stuff for the first time and it doesn't make any sense yeah but wait wait because you didn't get the script that's but once fun. you know the script once you know the dance moves yeah it's awesome it, it is actually awesome it is it is fun because everything is predictable and you know where it's going and you can steer it once you know exactly. how to do that so uh, meetings are they can be frustrating but when you when you know to navigate them I think they can be a cool part of Japanese okay. business. We have more cool parts of Japanese business. That's what the series is about. Exactly. The yes. joy of Japanese business. Hang around. Same time next week. We're going to be back for another episode. Peace.